Hi, everybody. I'm AJ Willoughby. So glad that you're back with us again on this Monday evening on the product training call. And we have got a treat for you tonight uh, because the subject we're going to be talking about is one that covers a magnitude of a bunch of different things with our products. We've got several products that have this particular ingredient, which is a major core ingredient in our core, uh, the core AO. It's the mango steam. And, uh, you know, one of the wonderful things that we have an M network with Dr. Fred Temple and is the fact that not only is he world renowned as far as botanicals all over uh, the world and uh, what they do, but he is the foremost authority on the mangosteen fruit. And tonight we're gonna be talking about the mangosteen fruit. And I'll tell you, there is no one on the earth that knows more about the mangosteen fruit than this man that we have who is uh, on the call with us tonight. He's with us every Monday night, and he is the head of our medical and scientific advisory board at M Network, Dr. Frederick J. Templeman. Dr. Templeman, thank you for being with us again tonight. It's always a pleasure, AJ. So tonight, we're going to talk about mangosteen. And why mangosteen? Because, you know, people talk about it, that have been around it, or that have heard about it before, and they're like, oh, it's got mangosteen in it. This is so awesome. And people that have never heard of mangosteen before, they're like, mangosteen, okay, I can get a mango at the store. Is that the same thing? What's the difference here? All right, mango, mangosteen. Why? What is the big deal about a mangosteen? And uh, so Dr. Templeman, we know, obviously, it has nothing to do with a mango, but, uh, well, a lot of people probably didn't know that, but now you know, it has nothing to do with a mango. It is a separate fruit altogether. Dr. Templeman, I'm going to let you take it away. Okay, well, this is my favorite topic. Uh, for 15 years now, I have been following the mangosteen, initially researching it amongst the very few people that were researching it. The internet did not exist at that time. And I actually traveled around the world and spoke to professors in different countries who were working with the mangosteen and who had used it in uh, some of their papers that they had put out about the potential benefits in medicine of some of the ingredients of the mangosteen. And we put them together. They got together pretty much on their own uh, after the internet became common. And now uh, there are hundreds, literally hundreds, of university professors spending significant period of their time researching the mangosteen. And uh, perhaps more of them uh, in a, a university in China, very interesting place in Nanjing, China. They have a university called the Chinese Pharmaceutical University. And unlike the uh, pharmaceutical faculties in other universities. This is a single institution dedicated to the research of uh, things that have to do with drugs. And they have 32,000 students in the school. They have specialized, I guess they have so many students in China that they've actually begun to specialize their university. So they have a university dedicated entirely to engineering. And they also have one now in this particular case, entirely dedicated toward the mangosteen. And these folks are very interested in the mangosteen. They have produced in the last three years, five papers, meaning scientific papers where at least five university professors have collaborated for hundreds of hours on researching some of the elements that are pertinent to this plant and to human health. They have done a randomized controlled double blind trial, which is considered the gold standard for being able to uh, have evidence that is valid and can be used to back up claims for disease effectiveness. And they've done that. Uh, they're not the only ones. I read uh, uh, just this month uh, in an in a electronic publication, which precedes uh, the publication of the article in the actual uh, paper uh, magazine, that the journal, uh, and it is about the mangosteen and diabetes. And it is a randomized controlled 
double blind trial, in other words, constructed in such a way that they have tried to eliminate all of the variables that could make their conclusions invalid. And what they discovered or what they concluded was that in obese women who were diabetic, that taking the mangosteen made a difference in reducing what is called insulin resistance. Now, when we become obese, uh, there is an element in the fat in the body, an active element in the fat in the body, that uh, counteracts the effect of insulin at the cellular level, so that you need more and more and more insulin to get the same effect of moving the sugar into the tissues, into the cells, and into the uh, mitochondria where it is burned and uh, produces energy. So a very good study, and the number 13 of the most recent studies over the past five years about diabetes and the mangosteen. We know that it helps people who have uh, diabetes based on what has been found in these uh, research papers, most of them of which with animals, uh, diabetic animal models, but they have concluded that it affects both the efficacy of the pancreas and those cells within the pancreas which produce insulin. So it stimulates the production of insulin. It also stops the damage that uh, we call glycosylation end products, kind of a shellac, if you wish, that is formed out of the excess blood sugar that is deposited and clings to proteins in certain tissues of the body and makes them work not so well. This is part of the reason why we have what is called microangiopathy in the kidneys and in the eyes that leads so many diabetic people to have kidney failure and to become blind. And that has been shown to be counteracted significantly in animal models as far as the deposition of this nastiness is concerned that leads to the loss of the effectiveness of nerve stimulation and of the proper form of blood vessels and supplying what they are supposed to supply at the capillary level to the tissues. So lots and lots of study. Now the mangosteen itself is a little fruit, very small, actually about the size of a mid-sized lemon. And the only similarity it has to the mango is that it grows in a tree. And in the difference to the mango, the, the mango can grow very rapidly uh, in a tree that is only three or four years old. But the mangosteen requires seven years of growth of the tree before it can begin producing fruit. And even though they've shortened that a little bit with selective breeding, it is still many years before a mangosteen tree will bear fruit. But in all of the markets of the world, in the 17 different countries where it is produced, the mangosteen is the most expensive fruit in the marketplace. There is nothing else that competes with price. And that is largely because the inside of the mangosteen, which is white and segmented like a little orange, is so delicious that people will pay more for it than for anything else. It's called the queen of fruits in Thailand, and it was reputed to be something that Queen Victoria offered exorbitant rewards to anybody who could get one to her in a, an edible form. So renowned for its taste throughout the world, grown for its taste throughout the world, which happens to be very serendipitous for those of us who look at the mangosteen as a source of supplements, because in fact it's grown for its commercial uh, viability as a tasty fruit. And the part that we want is the part that everybody throws away. It has a very thick rind, like some of the larger, larger navel oranges that you can buy, sometimes up to an inch to an inch and a half thick in, in some plants. And this rind, which is deep purple in color, is full of what make up the elements from nature that the human body uses so strikingly well. These are called polyphenols as a large classification. And within this large polyphenolic classification, there are a number of families of elements that can be used by the body and have been researched by researchers and proven to make a difference in human health. 
Now, the interesting thing about the mangosteen is that unlike other supplements, take for example, aloe vera. Aloe vera has really only one family of phytochemicals that is of great value. They are called the polysaccharides. And there are many different polysaccharides that the aloe vera has, but it doesn't really have any other family. The uh, citrus fruits have catechins in great amounts. Uh, green tea is nothing virtually in terms of nutrition, right? but catechins, that's another very large family. But the mangosteen, unlike the other fruits in the supplement world, contains six major families of these polyphenolic structures that the body can use to make the elements that we probably are not very good at making unless we get a ready supply of raw material. But it makes xanthones. And this is where all of the research is. The xanthones have about uh, in excess of 600 research papers that represent hundreds of hours of work by dozens of, dozens for a single sometimes uh, study. But the, the work of highly educated PhDs and MDs who are interested in discovering the links between these particular uh, products, the xanthones, that are available in no other product in the world. No other supplement is a source of xanthones. The mangosteen is the only source of xanthones. And that's why the mangosteen xanthones, being so rare, are the subject of so much research, the 600 papers. However, there are proanthocyanidins, anthocyanidins, polysaccharides, catechins, and benzophenones in there in large enough quantities to be considered extraordinarily diverse as a supplement. Because as I suggested, most supplements have one, maybe two of those families in abundance, and they are characterized as being representative, like aloe vera, of the polysaccharides. But the mangosteen has these in great quantity, all of them almost equal. The catechins, strangely enough, are more plentiful than the xanthones and the xanthones slightly more than the proanthocyanidins, and the benzophenones bring up the bottom, but all of them are in quantitative relationship one with another that makes the, the, the uh, fruit a source of all of these different things, even though we only basically talk about the xanthones because that's where all of the research is. All of these other things are in there with proven value for the human. And that, with the exception of the cannabis hemp products, is one of the uh, things that is so striking about this, is that it has such a versatility of supplemental ingredients in it. Only cannabis or the hemp is anywhere close to it, and they're still not anywhere near it. They have a couple of very large categories that are multiple in their, in their subdivisions, but nothing like the mangosteen. In fact, at my knowledge, there is no other uh, product like the mangosteen. Now, what are, what are the benefits of that for us as people who supplement from the mangosteen? Well, the benefits are that the mangosteen has effect across all of the body systems without exception. So we have the GI system, we have the nervous system, we have the endocrine system, we have the integumentary system, including bones and skin. We have uh, all of the different systems. And across every one of these systems, there has been documented beneficial effect in animal and preclinical studies. And sometimes, as I mentioned just recently, in human studies, indicating that this is perhaps the treasure trove of supplements as far as the, var the variety and of the efficacy of the things that are in there. So billions, billions of dollars have already been spent in researching the mangosteen throughout the world. It has been researched in over 100 universities in more than 30 countries. And we now have it being center to the research efforts of the largest pharmaceutical university in the world, 
And it is my belief that they will be developing an anti-inflammatory and two cancer drugs from the mangosteen in the next couple of years. Now, the Japanese have already developed an anti-inflammatory mango, mangosteen-derived medication that is sold like a pharmaceutical, uh, developed and uh, put into commercial production by a university in Japan. And it is therefore now very, very popular in an area of pharmacology that makes it even easier to talk about it as a supplement. And in fact, even though the areas that they're developing drugs for uh, hold enormous potential, the anti-cancer effects of the mangosteen are potentially great, there already are so many testimonies of people throughout the world who have used this and who have been given uh, giving testimonies of it to prove, one, that it works, and two, that it doesn't harm. And that's what we're doing with our products. We have it in two of our, three of our products at the present time. And these are perhaps, in my mind, the reason why the products are having the success that they are having is because of the mangosteen. And I will tell you frankly that when I do talk about the mangosteen, and can get somebody to listen to me for as long as I would like to talk about it, I'm pretty successful in capturing the interest of all of the physicians or any researchers who are academicians that I can speak with about this. They are genuinely interested and heavily impressed. Let me give you an example. When I deal with people who have cancer and I explain to them that we cannot say that the mangosteen will help with cancer, but we certainly can say that there is evidence that the body may be able to use the ingredients from the mangosteen to better defend against cancer in all of its stages. So prevent it to begin with, and then help when it develops to keep it from spreading in the body and becoming uh, deadly. The uh, people that I talk with very often have doctors who have told them or who do tell them, don't take any supplements while you are taking chemotherapy or radiation because many of the chemotherapy drugs and all of the radiation depends upon the creation of free radicals to destroy the cancer. And if you put something in there, which is a powerful antioxidant, you are going to cause the chemotherapy or the radiation to be less effective. Well, now that was what they believed, and there was a certain amount of common sense behind that argument. But all of the studies in the past seven years, perhaps, show that it isn't true. High-dose antioxidants used on a daily basis for people who are undergoing chemotherapy and radiation do not interfere with the process and the beneficial effects that the doctors who are administering those things are expecting to see. In fact, in a counterintuitive way, they enhance the, the effects of both the radiation and of the chemotherapy while protecting against some of the terrible side effects that are the normal uh, expectations of people who are undergoing either chemotherapy or radiation. So ask me if there is a single disease that I saw as a family practitioner that I would have been afraid to use the mangosteen in. And I'll tell you that beginning, there were a couple of things that I said, don't use it for you. But people do what they want anyway. They used it and they proved me wrong. So there is no condition that I'm aware of where I would say, do not use the mangosteen. And there is no condition where I would say, not say to someone, expect benefit. I was able to take 17 of the most commonly prescribed medications that family practitioners give to their patients and replace them with a natural product containing the mangosteen. And I saw that in the majority of instances where I replaced a drug with a supplement, the results were as good, if not better, than with the drug. Because there just are no side effects. A very few people can be allergic to some of the ingredients in the mangosteen but that is a rarity. 
and there just truly are no side effects, none of which are deadly, of the use of the mangosteen in any medical indication. And for people who are trying to stay healthy, who aren't sick yet, there are wonderful reasons to take it because it buttresses the body's protective actions against disease acquired either from the community or from lifestyle. So all in all, mangosteen is literally, I believe, the giant of the uh, supplement system when you look at everything in it that is called a botanical or something that is derived from plants. And I'm going to keep chasing the mangosteen until I die. <laughs> All right. So a couple quick questions here. All right. So sure. we've talked about, uh, you know, uh, different things with diabetics and uh, some of the things cancer wise. Where could people go if they wanted to do some research further, find some papers on all this? It is not hard to do. Now, again, I, I want to make the disclaimer that the level of the uh, evidence that I'm going to be talking to you about and which I've been talking to you about and I'm going to refer you to does not meet the criteria of being able to make claims. Now a claim either openly and overt would be something like mangosteen will help with cancer. You can't say that. The proof that is necessary to say that in, uh, and be legal under the current legislation simply does not exist. And I'll tell you that I don't expect it to exist in the future. So we don't have evidence that would convince certain skeptics of its validity, but we have evidence that fills absolutely a whole room if you were to stack the papers up. We have tremendous evidence in what is called preclinical or animal studies or in vitro studies, and they are very impressive. So you would go to the best database in the world called PubMed. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, as long as you can read English. You go to PubMed and when you're on the page, the search page, you put in the word mangosteen and whatever disease it is that you are interested in, and it will pull up the evidence that exists and you can read what are called the abstracts. Now you probably can't read the whole paper and make sense of it, but you can certainly read the three or four paragraph abstract that is a resume of the total paper. And you can get the kernel, if you wish, of the information that is necessary to let you know whether the research between the disease you're interested in and the mangosteen exists and in what quantity. And that's pubmed.gov, correct? Yes. All right. So now with the mangosteen, we're seeing things, everything from antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, um, anything with itis, which is pain or, or inflammation, all that, correct? That's correct. Like I say, uh, I, I'm not re reticent at all to say, if you've got a disease, regardless of how it's spelled, where it is or what it's doing, there's no reason for you not to try the mangosteen in order that you could discover for a case of one, you, whether it will make a beneficial difference or not. Because in the final analysis, it's in that case of one subset that the whole of the value of it is for any given individual. What will it do for me? Better spoken by saying, what can my body do more effectively if I give it the elements that are in the mangosteen as important supplements. Wonderful. And as far as the product that is on this planet that has the most effective use of the mangosteen, and uh, what, what would you say that would be? Well, there's no question. In my mind, I helped to develop that product. It is not a product completely of my uh, invention but I've been able to modify it. It is the product which is on the M uh, SKU list as the immune system stimulant. And it's full of antioxidants and it has more mangosteen in it than any other product per dose than any other product that has ever been marketed or that currently is on the marketplace. And it has a lot of things that other products do contain which aren't desirable and which are not necessary and don't help 
with the medical effects of the mangosteen. And there I'm referring to the sugars that are found in the fruit naturally. In this particular product, we have removed all of those sugars and none of the beneficial elements that are in it. And that particular product is our core AO, is the that name is of the product. All right. The other, now, the other, one last... Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Well, I was going to say the other two products that we have are we have them in the lab at the present time. The sleep preparation, which is also, I believe, an anxiety preparation, uh, contains uh, the same type of, no, it doesn't have mangosteen in it. I'm sorry about that. It has the same nano formulation that we are working with in the mangosteen. But we have it in the eight in one, in the cream. And we have evidence that the mangosteen in the form that is in that cream, in a nano form, can penetrate the skin of dead people down to the level of where their blood was. Now that's through dead skin. Imagine how easily it's going to go through live, healthy skin. So we have it front and center. You're going to see and hear more of it as long as I am around. Because we now have the very best product. There isn't anything that can even come close to matching it in the marketplace. And it is getting the kinds of results that the mangosteen is so well known for over the past 15 years. And looking historically backwards into the ancient times, that the mangosteen has been famous for, for centuries in several paradigms of traditional medicine, such as Thai traditional medicine, Ayurveda, and Chinese traditional medicine. Now uh -huh. we're seeing it in standard pharmaceutical medicine, our 20, 21st century uh, drugs. So last two questions. Number one is, is there any medication that you shouldn't be taking the mangosteen product with? There are potential food drug interactions based on research, but based on practicality, I have watched the mangosteen in preparations similar to the one we have and in our own preparation now for 15 years. And when there is an adverse reaction, meaning something that goes wrong, that can be attributed to the supplement, a report has to be made to the FDA about that particular element or that particular case. And in 15 years, and people have used it with every drug imaginable, I have never had to write a single report. So I conclude that although theoretical drug food interactions could occur, they do not. Wonderful. And then uh, I, I think actually that was my last question. So you go and uh, the M products, Core AO, and the 8 in 1 skin cream. So we've got you inside and out <laughs> with the Mangosteen in, in Network are the two products right now that uh, contain the Mangosteen. And there is no product out there that you'll find that has that the same amount. I know the other question. Are you able to take too much of the core AO? No, no, you cannot. Uh, I, in, you know, in the standard day that I am normally consuming it without pushing it, I'll take three. Now, I have taken up to seven and eight, no adverse effects. I have people with serious illness taking nine a day, no adverse effects. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Tippelman. Hopefully everybody has got a clear view of mangosteen and what it is and why such the big deal about mangosteen, because it really is a big deal. It, it really, is. yeah, it, it's something that is changing lives. This is, this is something that doesn't just make a difference. This is really changing lives drastically. And we're seeing the results from it. And uh, the best thing for you to do is just go and try it. If you have not tried and you're wondering, is this something that will help me? Go take it, try it, and see what it's going to do for you. Uh, sometimes, you know, depending on your situation, uh, it, you may take it for several weeks to start seeing the results benefit. Sometimes you're going to see results real quick, uh, you know, right away with that. Um, anything else on that, Dr. Templeman? 
Well, I just say that, you know, it comes from a tree, but most people think it comes from heaven. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And again, don't forget, we've got uh, calls going on all week uh, this week. Uh, there'll be another call tomorrow night talking about the business. Uh, then uh, cat call on Thursday. And then Saturday morning is Dennis and Sue Ligon that are going to be giving you some business training with M Network. Don't miss out on those. You can get those also on uh, Monday mornings. Andy Willoughby has a uh, call the Monday mornings. Uh, getting your week started off with him. You can catch this uh, recording of this at, at the M Network YouTube channel, uh, or you can find more information. It will be available online at mnetwork.com or mnetworkcalls.com, also at empowerplan.com uh, in the training thing. It will be up whenever we get this up within the next 24 hours, if not a whole lot sooner. Ah. Ah. Ah.